I'm in a car. We're Another, back. And we're back. Episode number two with Claire Oakley. The sequel. <laughs> it's awesome. I know there's been a lot of anticipation for the sequel. A lot of people would ask me, what do you do another little Claire Oakley? Have they been? Yes. <laughs> or is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds... Uh, no, I'm excited to do this. Um, yeah. So Claire's back for a, another summer, which mm-hmm. is coming to a close yes. soon. Which is Sadly. Sad face. Two more weeks. Um, so maybe uh, for everybody who doesn't necessarily remember your first video, you can give us a quick Coles notes in terms of um, how you got involved with Intrigue and what you're up to these days? So, um, I did my high school co-op placement with Intrigue back in 2018. Which was awesome. Which was amazing. And then I went off to school, did one year at the University of Ottawa, studying um, communication and marketing. And then I came back for the summer and did an internship. Sweet. It was great. Yeah, we're still having back. So, um, what are you doing come September? I'm going back to school. Yeah, and what, what's your kind of area of focus for the first semester? Um, so communication yeah. and um, marketing. So I'm taking those intro to business courses and marketing, and then I'm specializing a bit more in organizational communication, taking some interpersonal communication, intercultural communication. Cool. Um, and some cool courses like that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it sounds kind of exciting as much as I hate to see you leave, because uh, we love having you. But... Uh, what, what made you originally decide to, you know, join up with, with us at Intrigue? And then what made you decide to come back? So, I first came because I wanted to do a video or media co-op. That's how I arrived. And I came back because I learned so much. It was the most valuable experience. And I'm still, I'm still in that field. I'm not... So I'm not, I've, I've shifted a bit from the more arts and creative side to um, the more theoretical organizational side of communication yeah. and media studies, but still very relevant to intrigue. And I knew before I even left that I wanted to come back. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we knew before we left. <laughs> we wanted you back. So that worked out well. Yeah. So, um, you know, first, first year you were doing... Uh, um, a lot of the Iman cards. That was like the main project. Yes, that was the main project. And so you got to get your, you know, hands on your video editing, video production, some shooting, that type of stuff. Um, social media, understanding how the different mm-hmm. platforms work, that kind of thing. And so what's been like your biggest uh, area of learning this year? Under the impression, of course, that your largest area of learning is about to happen over the next two weeks. Getting on the phone. But, oh, yeah. Um, up, up until this date so far, what's it been like? Um, I think the area that I've learned the most has been, um, just the amount of stuff that's possible online in, um, tracking leads, really digging deep into understanding how people behave online, how they act on what they see, and really just the realm of possibilities that's out there with online advertising and specifically, um, social media and what's possible on those platforms. Yeah, that's cool. And so, like, what are some of the specific projects? Like, can you break that down a little bit for the, for the audience so you can understand what kind of experience you're actually getting? Because one of the groups that's going to be watching this video, I'm hoping, is going to be t- potential future co-op mm-hmm. students or interns. Um, and so just trying to give them a sense of, like, what is it that you actually worked on? Because I know there's been some really big kind of cool projects. Yeah. So the biggest one has been um, integrating Pardot. Um, you guys just got Pardot really recently, yep. I think, and I was part on part of straight up part of the part of implementation team. So it was really cool to kind of be on the same level as everyone else because no one else had used the platform before either. Yeah, we were all so we here. were all figuring it out together. Yeah. Um, so got to use part of and part of is um, super cool. So I, I learned I got to learn how to cookie people. <laughs> so you just like bought a bag of cookies and yeah, I just started them. handing out cookies. You get a cookie. You, you get, get a cookie. <laughs> um, so cookie people is like track their IP address, and then the goal is to get their email. So then they can ha- then we can when they come back, we know it's them again. And just so everybody understands, Pardot is a uh, is a marketing automation platform um, mm-hmm. uh, that is owned by Salesforce, uh, which is the largest CRM in the world. So um, it's like a email slash social media tracking uh, software that allows you to do some pretty badass stuff. And it really just 
links Salesforce to your social media and your email. So it's kind of a bridge platform that allows you to basically take what you're doing on both all of those things and have it all together and all work together um, to generate leads and do cool stuff. Yeah, it's been awesome. And then in, in doing that, not only do we set up, you know, the part of integration with Salesforce and you've been a big part of that, which has been awesome. We also um, ran a pilot LinkedIn ad yes. campaign, which was also super cool. It was so also super cool. What was that experience like for you? It was, su- it was very interesting because we did not succeed. <laughs> well, what do you mean we didn't succeed? So... Um, the goal of the campaign was to get people to download his marketing guide and we didn't get anyone to download it. One, we got one. We got one download? We got one. We got one. We did succeed. For 1200 (laughs) bucks. For 1200 bucks, we got one download. But we also learned a lot of things that don't work. Yes. So there was another success. And another success. And also the biggest success I think is how we're going to go about the next time we try to learn the LinkedIn ad platform because it was, wasn't something we've used before. And definitely trying smaller tests with a smaller investment to, to be able to learn what we learned on us, learn the next step of what we've learned, yes. parsing it down further is super important. Yeah. And small tidbit, I learned that the click through rate is the most important statistic from all those ads. Okay. Because it gives you a million statistics yeah. on your ads manager. I'm, I don't know if any, if you've looked at those, you're just like, well, what does all this mean? Right. Click through rate. It's important. Very important. Very important. Very important. This is the first conversion, right? Someone mm-hmm. clicking on the ad. That's cool. And so um, one year later at Intrigue, what, has anything changed in the organization from your perspective? I'm just more curious than anything. Um, more people. Mm-hmm. It's bigger. Um, not really. Not, not really. Like it, it feels the same. There's obviously more stuff going on. There's some stuff that's been like streamlined and whatnot. Um, like different huddles in the morning. Yeah. But I mean, for the most part, it feels the same. Feels for the me, same. that's really important because as we grow, keeping our core values and our mm-hmm. culture. And that's hard. You is... add five more people, five more people bring their own, their own perspectives and their own who they are to work. So the organization changes, but it's, it's changed in the same direction. That's super cool to hear. And so now that you've got almost two years of, of, you know, co-oping, uh, at intrigue, um, has it given you any different perspectives or, or more insight in terms of what you're thinking about from a career path? Yeah. I want to start my own business. Oh, Mike dropped. <laughs> Tell me more about that. I have a project in the works, actually. What are you doing? So, Can we get a sneak peek. A sneak Tell peek. Us? So, this is very early stages. Um, so, I met some people actually at an ADHD support group, and the idea came about that there really are. There's not a lot of resources out there. There's not a lot of knowledge out there about that, and there's so much misinformation and misconceptions about um, ADHD and just mental health in general. Right. So. Um, our plan and we're in early stages is to create, um, a hub of information, um, that is, has very directed resources for, um, people with ADHD, parents with kids who have been diagnosed or think, Hey, this might be my kid. How do I best help them? And family members, friends, and employers specifically, how to best support your employees with ADHD. And we long picture, Long picture down the road is to position ourselves as um, experts in the field and as consultants for businesses to really help them understand their employees, their employees' actual lives and how they can support them and help them and then essentially get the most out of their people by treating them as people and supporting them as people. Super cool. Mm-hmm. So what's what's the first kind of step? Um, the first step is content. So we... We are, we have other partners. Um, one of my partners um, is writing um, his autobiography. He has autism, and um, he has worked as a consultant um, for businesses in the past to, um, to help help them, and as a life coach for people with autism entering the workforce workforce and who have been in the workforce. So we're currently compiling resources and content. Um, 
with the idea of writing it for the person who's going to be reading it and who's going to get the most out of it. So if you're writing something for parents with young kids, it's, it's writing it and writing it for them. Yeah, yeah, so it's not just a generic one thing fits yeah, all. Yeah, not just a con- development disorder, blah, 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 blah. Well, so what? What does that mean for my five-year-old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are, is that the idea then, the marketplace, in terms of, like, who's going to be buying this stuff? It's going to be for parents, it's going to be for employers, it's going to be for and then people for that people. actually have ADHD mm-hmm. as well? Mm-hmm. Any, but any other audience? Um, those are the three that we have right now. Um, we're very early stages. We might find that there's more in the future, but those are the three right now. Sweet. That's so cool. Um, I have a whole bunch of ideas I'm going to ask you about uh, when this video gets turned off um, because I think there's that, that's, a, that's a really, really neat idea. Mm-hmm. So when did you come up with that? Um, like in December started. Cool. And then we just working on it. Parts, it, it didn't, it, it's morphed already. Um, so it might morph again. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Awesome. That's where it's at right now. Sweet. So then the, the million dollar question, are you going to come back next summer? Maybe. <laughs> I've got co-op I'm next summer. I'm on the summer. hook. <laughs> I've got co-op next summer, but I also want to use my co-op placements to broaden my horizons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I love it here. I know I will learn a lot here. That's, that's a given. You I don't know. have to come back. It's all good. I know, but I know I would learn a lot. Yeah. Um, but also potentially with the government or other great places in Ottawa. Cool. And potentially maybe merging my abroad with a co-op and doing a co-op abroad. I couldn't uh, encourage that idea more. I had this chance to live in Innsbruck for eight months on an exchange program. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And if you, I mean, whatever, you get all the recommendations you ever need from us. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't wait to see you start that biz. Um, and you want to tell anybody about looking for their co-op or internship, what they should keep in mind when trying to find a good spot? No, I've just been really lucky. I don't think I'm an expert in finding a good spot. I think I really lucked out. Mm-hmm. But when you got somewhere good, stick with it. Cool. Reach out again, even if you don't know if it's going to happen. Yeah, that's cool. Reach out. I think that's a good piece of yeah. advice for everybody. A lot of people don't. You know, you never know what someone's going to say until you reach out and ask. Mm-hmm. And what's the worst case scenario? They say no. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for having me back. Always a pleasure. Hopefully you come back again sometime. If you don't, we're going to wish you all the best. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.